Yes, today we are going to talk about the principles of energy inputs. And uh, these principles include the, we talk about the sources of energy. The sun is the main energy source. It produces wind, rain, biomass. Other sources are waste products with embodied energy. Yeah? So when we are talking about this energy input, so when we are designing our systems, we should consider the, the main source of energy, which is the sun from where it comes from and where it, land, it lands. Then the other uh, issue about energy input is about productivity. Permaculture systems should produce for their own needs and the needs of the people creating or controlling them. So we expect the systems to be self-sustaining when we're talking about the, the energy inputs. It should not depend on energy from outside. The energy required for construction and maintenance must be less than the energy it is able to produce. So we say that in our system, we should uh, have less input and more output. Yeah? And we can attain that by a production of this energy storage and conservation. It should also last as long as possible and take least maintenance. We expect that the system matures, it should have least maintenance. And that's why we call it permaculture because it's permanent. There's perma permanent uh, uh, regeneration, there is permanent harvesting, and the system does not require much inputs. Through careful and protected observation, to action, we can make least uh, change for the greatest possible effect. Yeah, we have to work where it counts, and you don't have to waste energy on unproductive work or unproductive system that keeps on recurring. Like we have this monoculture system, where so every year you do the same inputs, every year you do the same inputs. But in our systems, you do the design and you put the inputs once, and then the system regenerates itself. So. We need to use observation and natural cycles, energy and process to lessen our establishment and maintenance of input. This, the second energy principle we call the principles of energy cycling. So we are saying that uh, we need to stop the flow of nutrients and energy off-site and instead turn them into cycles. So instead of having a waste system where in and out, our systems are always recycling and that's why we call them regenerative. Yeah? So each component is as a, a cycle. Yeah? So we, uh, because of these cycles, we have like a zero waste systems yeah? where everything is a resource and all these natural um, elements are inputs of other processes and they perform different roles within the system. That's why we say that we have to design our system in a way that energy keeps on recycling within the system and there is zero waste in the system. Another principle on energy talks about energy efficiency and the key efficient energy planning is called zone, zoning or sector planning or placement of plants and animals and ranges and structures. So zones, we talk about five zones and the sectors, we talk about sun, light, wind uh, and water. So with regards to zones, we talk about planning from where more energy is required to where less energy is required. So from uh, we are more energy required, we call it down the intensive systems which requires a lot of attention which should be very close to the, to the house or from where you, you stay. And then the second one we call it zone 2 which is less intensive system but more productive uh, which is located slightly further. Then the zone 3 is more extensive system and then that is located further from zone 2 and because if you don't revisit it every now and then maybe you can visit after 3 days and then we have zone 4 which is now uh, like a woodland which does not require much of your attention maybe to just go and harvest woods and then we have the last zone which does not require energy called the natural forest like here we are sitting next to a natural forest here and then for the sectors we talk about how does when you place your design how does it rea uh, uh, regulate winds how do you regulate winds how do you regulate the sun within the system how do you regulate the water's flow do you have water catchment systems and conservation and that kind of thing. So we have to put all these sectors in mind in our designs. And then the last component on energy efficiency is about the slope. So we need to see uh, how your system is uh, interacting with the, 
with the with the with the with the run of water, for example, it's interacting with the rainwater from the house, rainwater from the sky, rainwater uh, uh, waste water from the from the house, and different other elements that are within the system. How does it interact with them? So we did also need to consider the other elements that are within the system uh, and consider like how does energy flow from one element to another in terms of attention and also in terms of self-regulation and relationship from one system to another and one element to another. You find that some uh, elements have a good relationship like a compost and a chicken garden. When the water flows to the compound, it, it can naturally provide nutrients to the kitchen garden depending on how you have uh, you have placed them so work smart not hard and design to be lazy actually permaculture design is supposed to be like a, a lazy farmer's uh, design or an old person's uh, uh, farming design whereby you do most of the harvesting and less of the work in five years time expect your system to be complete if it is designed in a way that it is energy efficient so the energy efficiency comes with the design yeah.